Hello everyone, and welcome to the MLOps workshop. In this video, we are going to be discussing managing infrastructure. This is a topic that often goes overlooked, but is actually incredibly important. My favorite tool for managing infrastructure is Terraform. Terraform is an infrastructure as code tool that can be used to manage any cloud, infrastructure, or service. It is honestly one of the coolest pieces of technology I've ever come across, and it is incredibly well built. I have used Terraform in production environments for quite a while now, and I've never run into a single issue. Terraform encourages a more declarative style, where you write code that specifies your desired end state, and the infrastructure's code tool itself is responsible for figuring out how to achieve that state. Essentially, it handles all of the API calls to a cloud provider to create and tear down infrastructure behind the scenes. In most courses and tutorials online, you will typically see a cloud instance be created through the console in the browser. This is fine for experimental purposes, but when it comes to production grade systems, everything, including infrastructure, should be code. Through the previous videos, we have talked about clouds, servers, containers, clusters, and more. Imagine having 100 running models on a bunch of infrastructure created by hand in the console. This would be an absolute nightmare to manage and maintain. There are a lot of benefits to using an infrastructure as code tool, but one of my favorite is that it allows us to be cloud agnostic. So what does cloud agnostic mean? It certainly doesn't mean cloud absence. The cloud is awesome and we should use it, but we should use it in a way that avoids vendor lock-in. This means that we don't have to closely tie ourselves to one specific cloud provider. We can quickly and easily switch between them. So let's see what this looks like. To the main Terraform site, we can see terraform.io. Um, I highly recommend that you go here and you take a look around and see you know, exactly what Terraform can give you. Um, the docs are great. They have some uh, awesome you know, introductory getting started. Um, lessons. It's, uh, it, it's a really, really great product. So let's take a look and see you know, how, like, what does Terraform look like getting hands-on? Because I know this can seem kind of, this has probably seemed kind of high level and abstract up until this point. So we can see, uh, you know, what do we have here? We have a main.tf. So actually I'm going to go ahead and Let's, let's delete some of this stuff that we don't need right now. Okay, great. So, I mean, this is really all we need to, to get started with Terraform, is we need to walk through installing it, um, which you can find the uh, directions to do so on this main site. Um, I believe you can actually just click this downloads and it will, yeah, this will explain how to download the CLI tool onto your local computer. And once it's installed, just like anything else, you can run Terraform commands. Great. So, you know, once that's installed, this is really all we need to get started. Um, we have, you can see, we have this provider block here, which is saying AWS. So, um, you know, we can see AWS here. We could easily set provider to be Google. Um, Google has a, uh, you know, it is supported through Terraform. So is Azure, pretty much every single big cloud provider is supported through Terraform. So um, basically we can create infrastructure, or any kind of resource in the cloud in the exact same way across all cloud providers. So provider, we're setting it to AWS and we're giving it a default region. You can also specify a remote backend state here so that Terraform will save the state of your infrastructure in S3 so it's not stored locally. So let's go ahead and take a look actually at the docs for this. Terraform AWS instance. And we can see uh, example usage here. So we can see provider again. Um, and this, this resource, um, so this resource tag is, is um, how we specify that, you know, we want to create a resource and this first part is um, what type of resource we want to create given this, this provider. 
So uh, again, the docs are great. You can read through here and see all of the available parameters you have. You can see it's highly, highly customizable. As you can see, there's a lot of things that you can plug and play with here. But we don't have to. Everything comes with a default. So, I mean, really, this is all we need to create an easy to instance in AWS. Just like, you know, we can, you can probably start and see how powerful this is. Instead of having to go into the, you know, the AWS console, click launch instance, uh, select your, your instance type. Um, it's just, this is a super, super powerful tool. So let's see how we use it. So we can see I'm in my Terraform directory, and in this directory we have main.tf, exactly what we can see up there. So the first thing we run is Terraform init. This is just going to initialize, we can see the back end, um, and it's going to download specific um, plugins just for this AWS provider. Great, so now let's run Terraform plan. And we can see that it's saving these terraform.tf states. So what this is, is, um, you know, we can kind of think of it as being like Git um, and how Git knows the structure of your project. And as soon as you change something um, and then you do a Git status, you'll see that Git has picked up on that change. Um, in the background, Terraform saves a state. And if I were to change, you know, after I've created this EC, EC, EC2 instance and I perhaps changed it to hello world, exclamation mark, Terraform is going to see that the current world, which is in this main.tf, and the current existing state don't match up. So it's going to try and update this EC2 instance in AWS to have the tag name hello world exclamation mark now. It just it allows us to define exactly what we want our infrastructure to look like, and it handles all of the details. So we can see after running Terraform plan, it tells us everything that it's going to be creating here. Right? We, we're passing in this AMI uh, instance type micro, or T2 micro. So this is under the free uh, free tier plan, and all of these are you know the default values. So which you have the option to customize. So now let's run Terraform Apply. And we can see, um, you know, I tested this earlier. And so we have this uh, instance that was in a terminated state right now. So it's not currently up and running. So if we now, we ran Terraform Apply and it's asking us to answer yes if we want to continue. So let's answer yes. And we can see aws.web creating. So right now it's going through the process of creating the EC2 instance on the AWS platform. And we can see it's, it's pending, right? So it's actually went and created an instance in the background. Uh, you know, we didn't have to log in here and do any of that. and every change that we make in here is now essentially it gets logged right we can at any given point in time we can see an entire the entire state of every single piece of infrastructure that we have up and running in a cloud right that's a super super powerful thing to have um, and now yeah now we can see it's running and you know it's so this created a resource and it's just as easy to delete one um, I believe we can run Terraform destroy or, so like I mentioned, we have a state object over here. The current state is that we have this EC2 instance running. So if I comment this out and then we try and run Terraform apply again, it's going to notice that we don't have this EC2 instance in our main file anymore. So it's going to remove it, right? Because um, basically it's, we tell it exactly what um, the state should be. And right now we're saying the state shouldn't have an EC2 instance. And we can see the plan here, zero to add, zero to change, and one to destroy. So if we go ahead and select yes, we can see it's now starting to destroy. And we can see it's starting to shut down now. So very soon it'll enter a terminated state. And just like that, 
you know, we quickly created an EC2 instance and terminated an EC2 instance, never having to touch the Amazon console. It was all done just with a few lines of code in a file locally. So I hope that demo il illustrated how powerful Terraform is as a tool. And now I want to show you a quick example of what I mean by cloud agnostic and the benefit that it gives us. So this example on the right, you know, this is very similar to what we used in my main.tf file, right? Provider AWS, give it a region, and then we're saying start a resource type of AWS instance. We're naming that instance in our local file web, and we're passing in just a few parameters. Now, if we look over to the left, we can see provider Google. Again, specifying a region, US Central 1, and this time we're creating a resource of Google underscore compute underscore instance. So if you were to go to the Terraform docs and you were to look up you know, Google Cloud instance, this is the documentation that I would show you. And so this is the resource we're creating. We're naming it default and you know, we can see how, how similar the, the setup is for creating an instance on AWS and an instance in Google, right? They have names, uh, machine type, N1 standard one, whereas on AWS it's instance type, right? Zones, it's the same thing. You can pass in zones with AWS, the specific image type that you want, um, network interfaces. So I mean, you can customize this however you want, but the real power here is um, we could basically have two separate Terraform files, and one could be just for AWS related resources, and maybe there's a service that you want to use just on Google that AWS doesn't have. Um, you could just the exact same way that you're creating resources on AWS, you can create them in Google. And this avoids vendor lock-in. And it's, uh, you know, it's a huge benefit to have this cloud agnostic approach.